Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening. As always, head over to reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, go snag your free PDF. It's a little study guide on the top 200 drugs. Uh, 31 pages, a lot of good content uh, based upon um, what I've seen in real life as well as some of the things that often come up on board exams or if you're taking pharmacology classes, um, you're going to find a lot of uh, nuggets and things that are, are going to be tested on uh, as you go throughout your career there. So again, head to reallifepharmacology.com, uh, sign up to get the uh, free top 200 study guide. All right, so the drug of the day today is fluvoxamine, and the brand name of this medication is Luvox. Uh, this is classified as an SSRI, so again, selective uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor, and the mechanism of action with this medication is it blocks serotonin reuptake back into neurons in the central nervous system. And ultimately, this leads to uh, an increase in serotonin activity. Now, as an SSRI, obviously, it can be used for uh, depression, PTSD, um, uh, GAD or, or anxiety disorders. Uh, most often in clinical practice, um, from my perspective, what I've seen is you're going to see this used for uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, that's probably the most common situation you're going to see it used. And as we talk about drug interactions and things like that, um, you'll see why it's generally not used uh, first line compared to uh, some of the uh, other SSRIs, which probably have less drug interactions and less uh, issues to, to kind of deal with. The usual dosing range for fluvoxamine is uh, 50 milligrams to 300 milligrams. And uh, the immediate release formulation anyway is uh, potentially once a day at lower doses. And as we get to higher doses, uh, manufacturers are typically going to recommend to uh, split that up into uh, twice a day. So uh, usually, you know, 100, 150 or, or higher, uh, we're going to go to that uh, second dose or dose it twice a day. Uh, adverse effect profile is going to be pretty similar to other SSRI, SSRI agents, um, sexual dysfunction, potential for, you know, sleep changes, um, things like that, uh, CNS effects, you know, dizziness, you know, some of that stuff can sometimes happen uh, with some of these agents, uh, GI upset, um, probably trending more so uh, uh, towards diarrhea versus constipation, and SIADH risk, so hyponatremia. Uh, is something we, we got to keep tabs on for as well. Uh, box warning exists with flu fluvoxamine, uh, suicidality risk with that boxed warning, um, just like all the other SSRIs. Uh, discontinuation syndrome something you, you've got to think about and remember uh, with fluvoxamine and SSRIs in general, I guess. Um, you definitely want to taper this med. If, if patients have been on it for a little while, um, you know, weeks, months, um, you're definitely going to want to taper that medication um, down and, and off over a period of, of weeks. Uh, if they've been on it for years and years and years, you know, you, you might be talking months that you want to taper uh, that, that medication down and off there. So uh, really, really important to, to remember that. Um, I've seen that come up in practice where um, patients either quit taking it on their own um, or uh, it gets, you know, tapered and discontinued too abruptly um, for patients that have been on it a long time. And, you know, just a reminder, the discontinuation syndrome, um, you can have effects like nausea, uh, anxiety, insomnia, kind of flu-like symptoms. And so that's a really, really important thing to uh, remember there, of course. Um, onset of action uh, with the uh, kinetics is something uh, that we've got to teach patients about, you know, you're not going to have instant impact on depression or OCD or whatever you're using uh, fluvoxamine to treat. Uh, it's going to take a period of, of weeks usually uh, for patients to really start, uh, even to start to feel better uh, with the condition we're trying to, to manage there. 
All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, ambulatory care, BCGP, MTM, NAPLEX, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, we've got an awesome list of resources there. I've just heard back from n- numerous candidates uh, in the uh, last testing session uh, that have been very thankful and uh, for the help in preparing them uh, to pass their exam. So I think we do a really good job of that um, in comparison to uh, um, other other products and, and other organizations. Uh, we really focus on those exams and the content outlines uh, in the content we put together. So definitely go check that out, meded101.com slash store. Uh, in addition, if you're uh, not a pharmacist, if you're a nurse, a nurse practitioner, med student, a dietitian, anyone um, who maybe needs a little bit of pharmacology help, uh, we've got various books on case studies, on drug interactions, um, recent guide on uh, drug food interactions uh, for a dietitian friends and things like that. So again, whole list of resources. All those are at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, wrapping up with drug interactions, and I kind of breezed through the uh, earlier sections a little bit more quickly um, because drug interactions with fluvoxamine uh, are so critical. Uh, I've had numerous situations uh, where fluvoxamine has uh, caused various toxicities and or issues. So um, let's think about many of the CYP enzymes. So CYP1A2, uh, fluvoxamine actually inhibits CYP1A2. Uh, so a drug like clozapine, definitely a, a drug that's uh, very sensitive potentially to concentration changes. Uh, those concentrations can go up due to uh, adding fluvoxamine on board. Um, The effects of caffeine, another one, through CYP1A2. If we inhibit CYP1A2, caffeine effects can go up. Uh, Olanzapine, another antipsychotic affected by CYP1A2. So again, uh, numerous drug interactions there potentially. Um, In addition, um, patients who smoke can actually have lower levels of fluvoxamine. Remember, smoking um, induces CYP1A2. Fluvoxamine is partly, at, le- at least partly broken down by CYP1A2. And so fluvoxamine uh, concentrations can go down as patients um, or smokers can have lower levels of fluvoxamine. If somebody stops smoking, those fluvoxamine levels can go up. So uh, definitely can be a very complicated uh, type of situation there. Uh, fluvoxamine also inhibits CYP2C19. So if you remember a few drugs here, uh, phenytoin, at least in parts, broken down by CYP2C19. Uh, I have absolutely seen a case of phenytoin toxicity because fluvoxamine was added to a patient's medication regimen. Uh, Other medications uh, increase concentrations of omeprazole um, and also potentially uh, reduced effectiveness of a drug like clopidogrel. Remember that one is a prodrug and is impacted by CYP2C19 activity. CYP2C9. So uh, fluvoxamine is technically classified as a weak inhibitor of CYP2C9. And if you remember, warfarin is broken down significantly uh, by the enzyme t- uh, 2C9. So we can end up with elevations in INR and in increased warfarin concentrations if fluvoxamine is added. Uh, another uh, enzyme that fluvoxamine impacts is CYP3A4. Uh, numerous drugs are obviously broken down, at least in part, uh, by cyp 3A4, um, numerous uh, opioids may have, uh, you know, increased concentrations there. Um, Carbamazepine is kind of a, a good example of a, you know, bipolar agent, uh, potentially uh, anti-epileptic agent that can really um, uh, be thrown off and also has a narrow therapeutic index where it's 
uh, tough to hit that sweet spot with concentration. Well, if you come along, add on fluvoxamine, um, concentrations of, of carbamazepine could go up. Uh, in addition to, to 3A4, 2D6 uh, can also be affected as well there. So numerous uh, opioids can be affected uh, by 2D6. Uh, we've got numerous um, antidepressants. You know, odds are likely you're not going to use fluvoxamine with uh, another SSRI, for example. Um, but uh, there are numerous uh, potential interactions with CYP2D6. Bupropion's a, an example there as well. So, again, the reason why fluvoxamine um, in that class of SSRI agents isn't used is because it has so many drug interactions. And if you ever see it used, it's one that I honestly look up uh, if I see it's going to be started or if I see a patient is on it. Um, and I look for those drug interactions uh, that, that may be an issue. I also educate patients if they're on fluvoxamine that there is a lot of drug interactions with this medication. So as they go on through their life and they start new medications, they change medications, um, it's critical to educate them and remind them, hey, you're likely going to have drug interactions with this medication uh, as you go on. So be sure to um, ask the pharmacist that you work with, ask your physician, ask your uh, provider that you work with, and uh, make sure that it's safe for you uh, to start certain medications. Because as you can see, I went through numerous medications potentially, and, and obviously that's probably just the, the tip of the iceberg um, as far as uh, drug interactions go there. Um, serotonergic drug interactions uh, can certainly happen. You think of uh, MAOIs and linazolid and things like that. So uh, serotonin syndrome risk, obviously you, you have to worry about. Um, Antiplatelet effects isn't something I worry crazy about. Um, but has been reported in the, the literature some there. So, and I discussed those a little bit more um, with the uh, SSRI uh, podcast in general there. So definitely go back, uh, check that out. Also get some, some nuggets on some of the other SSRIs. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. If you enjoyed this episode, found it helpful, uh, leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. That's greatly appreciated. Um, go check out the uh, uh, books, study materials, uh, everything we've got at meded101.com slash store. Purchases there directly help support this podcast uh, and keep it free and educational for all to enjoy. If you want to reach out to me, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. Uh, LinkedIn is probably a, a great way to do that. That's probably the, the uh, social media channel I'm most active on. Uh, also, you can email me at mededucation101 at gmail.com as well. All right, I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you have a great rest of your day.